established it. How? Listen, in Christ, he gave peace. In the believer, in the new man of believer, he established peace. How did he do that? Holy Spirit. <laughs> and he established it as the beachhead to destroy the enemy of grace and peace in our subject matter. Verse 16, he might reconcile. That's a key word. I'm going to tell you. That's a key word. The key word is reconcile. Reconcile. Christ on the cross reconciled us. Reconciled us. All right? Reconciled us. Here we were at enmity, couldn't get out, hopelessly caught under Adam's sin. Christ is going to take us over to here. You know, he's going to rescue us and transfer us, that Colossians 1.13. And reconciliation is the key theological word. Because there is a warfare. It's called the angelic conflict. On one side is hostility. That's enmity. On the other side is peace. This is hostility towards the plan of God. Not necessarily the way you personally feel, but the way God, the, the God of this world feels. The God of this world is hostile towards God. And anybody in the world has got, is under his influence of hostility towards God. You may not have that. Let me tell you. <laughs> you may not have that until you have a clear hearing of the gospel of Jesus Christ and then you get hostile. I did. What do you mean? And, and there's only one way to God? And, 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 and I didn't give a hoot about it before I heard the gospel and got under conviction. I didn't give a hoot. I, well, you people go off and do what you want to do. I don't care. You know, and I went to college and I met all people, all kinds of people from all different kinds of religions. I could care less. And then I got hit with the gospel. I mean, I, I wasn't even sure if God was real or wasn't real. I mean, what do I know? I'm a farm kid. I know about corn and wheat and all that, but I don't know about this stuff. And uh, yeah, come along and hit me with the gospel and I went, hmm. Then I, then I go like, well, then all of a sudden I get in a hostile kind of a state of a mind. I went like, why, why do you care, Ron? Well, well, I don't know, but why would they think that they're the only way? Well, it's, it's because this man, Jesus Christ, who even said that? I thought it was a swear word. Who even knows that this guy is in existence? And all of a sudden, I, I didn't have to give a hoot about that stuff. And all of a sudden, I'm ready to fight people and argue with them. And I'm like, what is going on? And then, you know, then I go to a, a, a revival, and a guy, an old Jewish convert comes out, and he got hard to understand his speech. And he said, Jesus Christ. And I went, oh, no. And there I was. And I, I, and I had no peace. I couldn't sleep at night. I couldn't drive a car. If I heard screeching of wheels, I thought I was going to die and go to hell. Who believes in hell? I don't know. I don't even believe in it. Oh, yeah, well, why are you afraid? I mean, I was a mess. Then later I find they call that conviction of the Holy Spirit, and I went, I've had enough of that. <laughs> I hope I know. If I get saved, am I going to have any more of that stuff? Uh, no, no, Ron, because you're going to have peace. And I went, boy, I hope so. It wouldn't come quick enough for me. I mean, this stuff is real, people. If there was anybody that could have verified and doubted, it had been Ron Adma. I couldn't dispute it. I mean, I had it. And when I got saved, you know, I, then I go, then I start going, well, I'm probably not saved. And so I asked Jane, a uh, Jane. Jane said, said, well, how are you sleeping at night? And I went, what? What's
What's that got to do with it? Well, how are you sleeping at night? I said, really good. You know, da 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 da. <laughs> you know, that was Jane's response. Well, hello, Christian. And I went, why is that? Because of the peace of God. And I went, wow, there's a lot to, a lot to learn about this stuff in there. And she went, well, there's a little bit anyhow. Uh, anyhow, yeah, so, hey, before I leave this, though, look down at 217. 217. There's a quote. This is really it. See, you don't want to miss this stuff. See, you would have just went by that, went on to chapter 3 and whatever. But you see, Paul put into this passage Isaiah 57, 19. And it's brought back in Acts, the second chapter, verse 30. I don't know. I don't know that it's 39. Is it? I wrote it down, but did you look it up? Well, aren't you a good student? <laughs> Jeff Baxter, I'm going to write that down. <laughs> Uh, okay, that's well worth your time, people. He popped that in there. Verse number three. It is important to understand the biblical, biblical formula for the doctrine of peace with God. In order for it to automatically work as it automatically functions under the indwelling ministry of the Holy Spirit, there's a formula. <laughs> I don't, I look for them. I don't know. Um, I couldn't cook anything else, so I apparently <laughs> look for formulas to cook the Word of God. But this formula I found in Romans 5, 1 through 11, the formula. And listen, listen, you can, it's identified in the fifth chapter, verse 1. Now, I got me a reader over there, so Joel, let's go at this thing. In Roman, he opens up subject up of Romans 5, 1 through 11. So Joel's going to read that when I, until I tell you to wait. I, go ahead. Verse 1 through 11. Well, I just want one. Therefore being justified by faith. Oh. See that? You know, that we're justified, that's justice. All those 13 did, see, enmity is only one of 13. The moment you believe the gospel of Christ, all 13 of them are removed. All 13 judicial charges. And in place of that, you have the justice of God. You are just justified. They, they, you'll never see those ever again. They are gone. You know what removed them? Nothing but the blood of Christ. Right, right. Nothing but the blood. Here we go. Here we go, big boy. Therefore being justified by faith. By what? By faith. Okay. We have peace with God. Watch this. Justified. See, faith is that Christ died for your sins, was buried, and raised from the dead the third day. Justified by faith. And you got justified in Christ. You see, in Christ, he made every, he's, he's in the process of making everything right that has been wrong, wronged, right? He's making everything that's been wronged to him. And so he's doing it for grace. And he, he removes all 13 judicial charges. You ought to get that little packet of 50 things that you receive in salvation to ever lose in time and eternity. You ought to get that and read that. It, it, it describes all this. Well, anyhow, let's see, Joel. So here we got the gospel. The gospel comes in. Read that again, Joel. See, that's how, see, watch this now. And so we get peace with God through faith in the gospel of Christ. Watch this. See, the gospel brings us to reconciliation. Here we go. Through the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh-huh. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Right. See that? So this is how this whole thing begins. This is how this whole thing begins. And then we're going to see... The gospel takes us to reconciliation. Reconciliation takes us because reconciliation is what's brought the two parties together, right? You're at war and here is peace. Well, we're going to resolve this so that we, we have peace. 
Okay. So, in verses, now read verse 2. By whom also we have obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we boast in hope of the glory of God. Okay. We're missing something. So go back to verse 2. By whom also we have obtained access by faith into this grace. In See, our introduction. See, we had... The, the key idea there, what are you reading from? Uh, you, you got the, you got the new, new American? Well, what a song. Read our introduction. Uh, read, read, read that. Listen to that. There's a difference here. There, there's a unique difference that's really important. Read that. We have obtained our introduction faith into this grace right look look verse one set us up we go to the gospel our faith is in the gospel and it, the gospel brings us to the peace of god then he introduces verse two and watch what he says about the faith that you listen to me now you're missing it the the, the just the basic baby faith that got you saved like me then no nothing i just say if you believe it you get it I'm, what I, I'm after it. Was my introduction, right? When I believed the gospel, it was my introduction to the whole system of God's faith. Do you see that? It was my introduction to the whole, the whole formula. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself is a gift of God. For by grace you're saved through faith. See? It's a formula. And he calls it when you believe the gospel, it is your introduction to the faith system. God's faith system. Uh, Horton, pick that back up at, inter start with, just prior to getting the introduction. Obtain our introduction by faith into the grace to which we stand and we exalt in hope of yeah. the glory of God. Yeah. See, isn't that wonderful? See, it, it, the, the, the formula. So my baby faith, my baby steps is with faith. My baby steps with faith is to believe the gospel. It's baby steps. It's not the end of the day. It's the baby steps towards it. And I get born again. And I'm a baby. And it's my introduction now out of the world and into Christ of the whole faith system that introduces us with how grace works. For by grace, you're saved through faith. The whole grace program has now been shifted over to the faith system. Then he does something interesting. I'm, I'm going to use your word. I, you, you got the right Bible with you. Now, watch what he does. He walks away because everything's about being saved. Agreed? Agreed? Watch what he does. He walks away from that in verses 3 through 5. And he's dealing with a Christian life and this system of faith and peace. The system of faith that brings peace to us. Are you with me? See, he, he, got, me, he got me all over introduction to the system of faith. I thought, boy, I would have learned this. And he goes like, Whoop. And, and he takes me over into the Christian way of life. And, and watch this. Watch 3, 4, and 5. And not only this, but we also exalt in our tribulation, knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance and perseverance, proven character, and proven character, hope. And hope does not disappoint because the love of God is poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit, which was given to us. Now what? See that? And he looked, this whole system that you got at salvation as a package, didn't earn it, didn't deserve it, but you got it. Now you're, you're, you've been introduced to the, how the faith system works uh, with, with grace operating in your life. But you're still in the devil's world. And the devil world, as a believer, the devil world, 
is going to give you tribulation. We led, where did we read that? Peggy read, read about this tribulation of the world. John 16, 33. In the world you will have what? Tribulation. But that's not a bad thing. That's not a good thing. What? What? Are you, what? The tribulation of the world now is a good thing, yeah. Because you have peace. No, you always have peace through it. And now, it's, God is going to take the tribulation of the world and use it for your spiritual benefit. Because the faith system is going to take that. It's now going to work a positive way in your life for all. Oh, Romans 8, 28. For all things work together for good. This is how this thing goes. This is the mechanics of it. You bring about perseverance and proven character and hope. See, all those are positives, aren't they? Yep. And a hope that does not disappoint. And here's the love of God just to shine it, shine on everything. <laughs> it brings it this. What verse are you in? That's verse 5. Okay. Now watch what he does. Watch what he does. He goes back to salvation. <laughs> What's that? 6 through 11. Do you see that? Wait, don't read yet, Lord. Do you see, everybody see that? He goes back to salvation. This is so good. Oh, this is so good. Only Paul writes this way. I mean, he is so good. Just about you think, I wonder where he's going. I mean, this has got me kind of confused. Now he's got me thinking, where's the proven stuff and all that character building and all that? And he comes back and says, no, I'm just giving you a glimpse out there of where, where, where you're going to go in Christ. I'm just kind of showing you that in the world you're going to have tribulation and God's going to turn that thing upside down in every way you can imagine and he's going to use it for your benefit. <laughs> right? Happy days out of here. You know, see, that's what he's after. Now watch. He comes back to the, now he comes back and he says, now let's get back to our study. Uh, that was just a preview of coming attractions. So let's get back to our, fame, our, our main feature. Here we go, Horton. 6 through 11. For while we were still helpless, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Yeah, see, he jumped all the way back and put us back in the world over here. He put he back, he jumped back, he put it, he stuck us back in the world. I was just ready, to, I was feeling pretty good here, Jeff. I thought, hey, and, and then he stuck me back over there with these guys. And while we were still He's, and look, he's trying to show you the magnitude of God's grace. When you said, I believe the gospel, you entered into the introduction of the faith system that introduces you to the enormous system of God's grace. And so he, he's giving us a snap preview of how God is going to work your faith into the grace program. <laughs> that is so good. I can't stand it. Here we go. And he, so he takes us back to the world where we were helpless and ungodly. Listen, and this is not necessarily the way we were behaving. It was our position in Adam. Our position in Adam is that way because it's under the control of the God of this world. 1 John 5, 18 and 19. I mean, you're not, well, you know. Okay. Here we go, Horton. One would hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for a good man, someone dare to die. Can you imagine, look, Horton, I was talking with a vet today, a Vietnam guy. See, that makes a lot of sense to me, but to die for a foreign, die for a foreign nation. I mean, it took me a while to get over the fact that my father uh, died in France and was left there. You know, a whole dog and push it in. And, uh, uh, yeah, where, where's the honor in that? And then as you grow up and you understand, the, the, you know, is that just a White House decision or was that a good decision? All that kind of stuff. And the point is, military is an honor code. When I went in the Army, one of the great things I got from it was the honor code. 
I don't know where that is today, but it was an honor code. And you did everything as a team with honor. And, but anyhow, here we go, Horton. Verse 8, but God demonstrated his own love. Uh, I love us. this, Horton. I love this verse. So let's walk it. But God demonstrated his own love toward us. What's and, demonstrate, and Horton? And that while we Wait, were Horton. getting... Wait, Horton. Wait. I know. I, I, wait, wait. <laughs> wait a minute, Horton. There's an echo in here. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's you repeating yourself. <laughs> Look, would you come back to more of my Tuesday studies? I mean, you're a joy. Now, I know you can't always do that. But. Dem what's demonstrate? Show. Show out. Yeah, see, I'm all the time saying that it's always watch when God shows up and then shows out. That's a big deal. Do you know, do you know, I keep telling you this, and I don't know that you believe it or not, we sat in the middle and have been for our, now in our third year of a great revival of souls right here in Moody. And every Wednesday night of every last month, Willie comes down here and baptizes them in a horse trough. <laughs> and I wouldn't have it any other way. I've had a guy come up and say, hey, we, I, you, you can get a, a baptism, a, a portal, well, I don't know, a baptism. And I went, I went, I, yeah, I know about it. I have a pastor. I know about this stuff. I don't want it. It's, listen, the wants really baptized in it. Listen, I'm a farm kid. This, if I know, wow. Spend no money on that thing. Well, he baptizes no matter what the weather is out there. But here, here, I, I want to finish this up, and then I got to go home. I don't know where you guys are going, but I'm going home. I'm having a lot of fun, but I'm still going home. Okay, Horton, God demonstrated I'm afraid to stop him now. God demonstrated his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. See, he's, he, he's, he's described a lot, of, a lot of ways he's described the person that's in the world in Adam, isn't he? And, uh, and he's, he's going to call them enemies and <laughs> enmity. And it's not that, that that's the way they are personally. It's where they are positionally. In Adam is a position. In Christ is a position. Much more than having been justified by his blood. What 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 verse are you on? Nine. He's got me hollering. Nine. Yeah, he <laughs> Which I, comes after eight. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want you to listen, I want everybody to pay attention to the word much more. It's used in nine, it's used in ten. Pay attention to this. Look, can you go back one more time uh, to nine? Uh, Much more mm. than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through him. Whoa. Amen. Who is right. For while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son much more Having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Yeah, and that, and that Aaron, see, he didn't save by his death. He didn't say saved by his death. He did not say that. He said, now we're saved by his life. Because who's coming back? Christ. Christ. The one who is alive yeah, is coming back for us. And he's coming back because of reconciliation. We're part of the reconciled family of God. Amen. Well, thank you, Br Brother Horton. <laughs> and I don't know. Thank you, Brother. <laughs> we'll come back. <laughs> we'll, uh, ne next time we come back, I'm going to talk about how in the Christian life, inner peace can work uh, in sustained long periods of uh, adversity. We're a nation that needs it and, and probably a church. Uh,
So, Mr. Kniep, we thank you for coming and visiting with us again. We consider you family, not a visitor. And would you close us in prayer? Yes. Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful church, this wonderful body of believers. Thank you for Ron Adelman. Thank you for Gary Horton. Thank you for all these wonderful people that have grown in the grace of the Word of God mm -hmm. through the teachings of a man that you sent our way many years ago. Just thank you for this church. Continue to bless it and let it grow. And uh, be with each and every one one of us to have peace in our lives. Mm. These things I say in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.